When our hearts are filled with God's love, everything we do is filled with joy. Even the challenges around us can turn our hearts to be filled with joy. To spread this love, let us all join together and spread happiness. Support Shalom. No gift is too small. No gift is too big. I'm a parishioner of a Holy Family Parish in Inverness, and I have been a member for 27, almost 28 years now. I am one of nine kids, and all of us were brought up as cradle Catholics. And um, if my mother stressed the importance of going to Mass every Sunday. So also, my, um, my family prayed the rosary every night. And also, I know that my mom was into all the dis devotions to Blessed Mother, Mother Perpetual Help, and uh, First Friday devotions to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So uh, I decided, when I decided to travel to the United States in my 20s, that was a long time ago, I, uh, I thought, I mean, I was deep rooted in my faith. That's what I thought. Little did I know, this was my first trip outside of the, uh, the Philippines and I didn't know how my life will unfold here. Everything was fine and dandy, but it wasn't. We had so many, we went through so many bad times, difficult times, and good times as well. So this is um, when I started my life-changing journey, but I could share one, which was my first pilgrimage in my whole life. I've never been to a pilgrimage to Holy Land in 1999. And it was a 10-day trip uh, led by three priests because there's a hundred of us. And it was such an awe-inspiring experience. It was like the Bible come alive. I have never, I mean, walking through the footsteps of Jesus, you know. So this kind of, every day something mystical happens and every day we had a mass. And for some reason, it just touched me. I, I have never felt like this before. So we, we got home and sure, sure enough, I was in cloud nine and I, I wanted to tell everybody about the good news, you know. And this, this, uh, during this height of excitement and joy, my, our late pastor, Father Pat Brennan, approached me and said, uh, would, you, would you like to start a perpetual adoration? Uh, what? I said, that means 24-7? Yes. I said, oh my, that's a daunting task, Father. And he said, you can do it. How can I say no to my pastor? That was in June of 1999. So I said, well, maybe my face shows that I'm really excited. So I left the rectory. And I was so happy. I was jumping in joy in, in the parking lot. But I said, oh, Lord, I ask your help because I don't think I could do it. So that started. I went online. I, I you know, uh, looked for how to prepare for uh, uh, perpetual adoration in a parish. And I asked my friends to help me, my prayer group. And, and within a year or so, we were able to put everything together, and lo and behold, we have this little adoration chapel, and believe it or not, that was a janitor's closet. So we remodeled it. And it was dedicated on August 13, 2000, and since then, hundreds and hundreds of adorers have been through that chapel, and I know um, their lives have been transformed through difficult times and through happy times. They've been there too and thanksgiving. So I, you know, my life totally changed. I thought, whoa, I mean, I'm, I'm very close to Jesus, but what do I get out of this devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, I ask? I, you know, I've been going there for 70, 16 and a half years. And every time I go, it's like, I feel more peace more 
love, joy. It's not that out of duty that I go because I have my holy hour every Tuesday, once a week, but it seems like I want to go more and more. I long for Him. I long for, for Jesus. I want to spend time with Him because, you know, when you have a friend and you, and you, you love this friend, you want to talk to Him, spend more time with Him, and that's exactly how I felt. Jesus was becoming my friend. It wasn't like He, you know, in the Philippines, all we know is you got to go to church, you know, or else you'll be punished. And here he is in the tabernacle. And, and it's like, I can talk to him. And he's real. And I, you know, most of the time I feel his presence. And he resides in me deeply down in the depths of my being. And that's, that's how I feel his love. I feel the immensity of His love and the intense the, the mercy that He has for all of us. We have hope. Our humankind has hope, you know. I feel that when I go there, um, I not only pray, because prayer means it's communication between two people. And when I pray to God, to Jesus, uh, I listen afterwards, and that's when I find more comfort, when I just sit there and listen and just talk to him like a friend. And I get more, because before I used to just pray the rosary, do my chaplet, and it was kind of structured. But now I feel it's like, I want to talk to Jesus. I want to see him. I want to be with him. I just feel that my Eucharistic life is such a driving force in my life. It's the source and summit of my faith. It's, it's the rock, it's the fire, it's the foundation of my faith. I don't think I can live. I can't live without the Eucharist. Eucharist is the sacrament of love and how can you not love Jesus? He's just there waiting, waiting for you. He's always saying, I thirst. I wanted you to, to feel my love. So that's, that's how I feel whenever I, I go to the Blessed Sacrament. I feel His love and it, it has just completely changed my life. Shalom World Television is coming to Australia. This is a great gift. It's been gifted to many parts of the world and now it's our Australian turn to receive it with open arms. I welcome it, I bless it. It's going to really support family life, married life, youth. Give us a resource that uh, we know that uh, we need really help in the, great help in these areas. May Almighty God bless this new resource coming to our land in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom World, God's own channel.